This week we're coming to you from San Clemente, California, and we're staying at San Mateo State Park. It's our first California State Park. What did you think? It was okay. Uh, the location was good for us. It's close to the ocean. It's a great spot to visit if you like to surf and if or you, beach or, or go to the beach. Yes. Uh, inside the park, there really is nothing to do. There's no, you know, playground for kids. If you have kids, there's no pool. You know, it, it just really is a basically a, a, a campground, campground yeah. to come and stay the night or overnight or whatever. But uh, it's, a, it's a nice area. We did ride our bikes down to the beach and walked along San Clemente Beach. Today we're taking a ride to the beach from our campsite. There is a sister state park right on the ocean from this state park and we're going to take the trail that goes between it. It's a biking trail so we're going to ride our bikes down to the beach and then we'll explore from there. in San Clemente overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It's a beautiful but kind of cool day and the winds are blowing but it is it's very sunny and pretty mild. Yeah it's probably low 60s. Yeah, the breeze I would is a say about, yeah. About breeze is a little cooler than that. Yeah. yeah but there's still people out on the beach and the, their swimsuits and sunning themselves so yep. apparently you know beach day is a beach day. Exactly, exactly. And there are surfers out. So. Yeah, yeah, there's and pretty good waves today. Yeah, really good waves today. The breeze is kind of coming from the northwest, so it's kicking up the waves a little bit and giving them pretty good rides. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's nice out here. It's not crowded at all for the, well, I suppose for this time of the year, I can't imagine too many people come here in January. Right. I can only imagine how crowded it is, you know, come spring break or Easter and into the summer. Yeah. But, and we locked our bikes up the, by the bike path. Yeah, and it's very nice. Yep. Well, we survived our bike ride. Barely. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. I don't know how far we rode. Probably quite a bit. Yeah, probably a fair amount. Yeah. yeah. It was fun, you know, going down to the beach, walking up on the pier, seeing the surfers out there battling the strong current and uh, Waves. tide. Yep. Um, yeah. There was a few people, I mean, 
a few people still laying on the beach even though it's less than 60 degrees yeah but the sun is bright so and when you're laying on the, on the sand it, it gets warmer so yep. true diehard fans beach fans that's right you can never pass up a day at the beach i guess nope yeah but yeah it was it was a good ride um you know this area is a little hilly very hilly very hilly so the and the roads kind of wind around yeah you have to be careful because some of the roads just circle around and don't go anywhere really and so you gotta be watch it but they do have a marked bike path so you just follow them and you're pretty good right it's a very nice bike path yep yeah so it was a good ride yes it was we did drive over to dana point where there's a very nice harbor and boat launches and restaurants so that was a nice area unfortunately we picked the wrong day to decide to go kayaking it was cloudy so we nixed that idea and we went to the richard nixon memorial library and museum which is in uh, it was Gor gorbalin gorbalinda no i can't remember gorbalinda ah, well you have to take out that part <laughs> okay. <laughs> it would, we will reference the name of the city that it's in, people. Right. Which we found well worth a visit. We should have really gone a little bit earlier in the day. So if you do plan on going, I would give it at least four to five hours. But Especially if, if you're a history buff. Right. If you like to read about history. And especially for us, because when Richard Nixon was in office in the subsequent Watergate investigation, we were just teenagers and didn't really pay that much attention to it. One of the most stunning developments in foreign affairs that anyone in my generation can remember. I have requested this television time tonight to announce a major development in our efforts to build a lasting peace in the world. Premier Cho and Lai has extended an invitation to President Nixon to visit China. President Nixon has accepted the invitation with pleasure. Well, once you go through the museum, you will realize and hopefully come out with a new appreciation for President Nixon. He really was a good president and he accomplished a lot during his presidency. And unfortunately for Watergate, that kind of, you know, put a black mark yeah he was on, a little bit paranoid and yeah you know, on his presidency abuse the powers of the presidency i shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow so we're standing outside of richard nixon's birthplace and this is in the nixon library in yorba linda california we just finished uh touring the museum and library it, it is fascinating it really is a great museum. And if you've never been to a presidential museum, they're literally a slice of time where you kind of learn about everything that happened during the, the presidency. What was happening in the country, what was happening in the Oval Office, you know, what was happening in the world. And it's really interesting, especially most of them are lied out in a timeline as you start through there you know you start out when the president is running for office and you work your way through the years of the presidency and in this case until he had to leave office yes due to the watergate break-in and the subsequent tapes and yeah but what what's interesting is that you learn a lot more than what you typically remember in our case we temp tend to remember you know nixon resigning but in reality, he did a lot of good. He was responsible for the Environmental Protection Agency, which has helped with giving us our clean air that we have today. He brought an end to the Vietnam War, some say somewhat controversially, but at least he brought it in with some level of honor instead of just walking out on the Vietnamese. And he ended the draft. So today, all our, the branches of the military are strictly voluntary. He was a paranoid person, at least towards the latter years of his presidency, and that was what ultimately got him in trouble with the um, Watergate break-ins and the follow-up cover-up of that. He was looking for information on his opponent in the election, and people working for him went a little too far, and whether he knew all about this at the time or did not is still up for debate, but it ended up bringing down the presidency, his presidency. But I have to say, I was really impressed and uh, 
have a lot better feeling about Richard Nixon. Yeah, yeah, I think he was a very shrewd politician and um, very smart for uh, uh, foreign policy and did a lot for our country. Mm -hmm. This, this campground, you know, we talked about it being the sites are kind of small and everything. There's really, like we said, there's not a lot to do. You are about a mile and a half from the beach, so you can walk to the beach or ride to the beach. If you have your bikes, um, San Clemente is a very bike-friendly town. There's a lot of bike paths along the streets that you can ride through um, and not have to worry about traffic. Uh, that's a couple of good things about this, but there are no other hiking paths in the park, and probably my biggest complaint about the state park and it's probably going to be true to other California state parks they're very expensive uh, this site with just 30 amp electric and water was $65 a night This is a first. We've been camping for almost five years now with the Airstream and we've stayed at hundreds of campgrounds and I've never seen this at any campground before. We're at the dump station and you have to pay ten dollars to dump your trailer at the dump station. I've never seen this before. It's a first but California they've got your their fingers in your wallet, I guess, at every chance they can get. This is probably one of the most expensive state park. This is the most expensive state park we've ever stayed at, and they're going to charge you an additional ten dollars when you're done to dump your trailer. In California itself, you have to really. Um, plan on it being more expensive than other states you visit. We've taken into account that we are going to spend more money traveling in California, but it's something we decide we want to do and, and we budget it accordingly. But just to let you know, if you're going to come here, um, this site or this campground is not the best um, for the money you're spending. It's, it, it's, it's a $25 to $30 a night campground anywhere else. And for $65 a night, you're really not getting anything extra for that. If you enjoyed this video, what should they do? Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit the bell for notifications and we will see you in our next video when we come to you from Disneyland. Bye. Until then. Next. Till then. Bye, everybody. Bye.